20 years ago, under the stress of war, cars relished getting their feet wet. Today, they object strongly. So to carry them dry shot across Britain's rivers and lakes, some 45 ferries plough their way steadily from one bank to another. Here at Woolwich, one of the two Thames car ferries carries a load of 20 cars free of charge. Out in the river, she passes her old comrade, who's been picking her way across this busy stream of river traffic for 40 years. There are no zebra crossings for car ferries. On arrival at the other side, down goes the ramp, and away go the motorists, who, incidentally, could have crossed the river, also free of charge, four miles upstream by diving through the Blackwall Tunnel. Up north at Liverpool, there is another road tunnel under the Mersey. Under the Severn, there is yet another, through which cars can be ferried by train. So the motorist either floats across rivers, dives under them, or looks for a bridge. But the greatest of Britain's bridges is for trains, not for motorists. Below it, at sea level, runs the Queen's Ferry Car Ferry, often so congested that unlucky motorists have to journey 20 miles upriver to cross the Firth of Forth. But a new Forth Bridge is taking shape, a treat in store for the motorist and redundancy for the ferry boat. In the Lake District, a picturesque little ferry pulls ten cars a few hundred yards across Lake Windermere by cable. It saves the motorist ten miles by road and gives the driver a chance to enjoy the scenery. But how can people reach these beauty spots without facing traffic jams and yet add to their holiday comfort and subtract from their luggage problems by having with them the cars they know and like best? British railways run car sleeper services such as this one from London to Perth. Having booked well in advance, at more than £20 return for you and your car, you arrive at Holloway Loading Bay. Passengers cost extra. So do pets. When tickets are checked, cars are loaded onto double-decked covered vans attached to the train. Each van carries six average-sized cars. The delicate parking is undertaken by loading attendants. No chance for the cartoonist here, with his evergreen dig at the wife driving through the garage door. The sleeper service, which carries more than 15,000 cars a year, also runs to the West Country and links up several towns with the cross-channel ferry service to the continent. Cars for the lower deck are dropped into position and secured. Ignition keys are carefully labelled and taken over by the attendants. When the train pulls out from London, the motorist has no worries about the 400 and something miles of road ahead of him. He can climb into his bunk knowing that all through the night his car will be averaging 52 miles an hour in the right direction without its wheels turning. At dawn, as the train approaches Perth, he's fresher and in far better shape than he would have been after one of those drives which can take so much edge off the beginning or end of a holiday. To the west of Perth, across Scotland to the shadow of Ben Nevis, where Loch Leven spills into Loch Linney, runs the Balahulish car ferry, 
a frail link on the main road from Dunbarton to Inverness, for in such a majestic highland setting, it can hardly compete with all the sightseers at only six cars a trip. This strange craft, manned by a crew whose rugged features seem to fit well into the landscape, needs careful handling, for the currents are strong and the weather can be rough. The skipper has several positions from which he can manoeuvre the craft. Another feature of this ferry is the swivelling ramp. Instead of the ship lining up at the road, the road lines up with the ship. From six car space to 45 on the largest and longest car ferry within the British Isles. It runs from Fairley, Ayrshire to the Isle of Arran and it costs the motorist from three pounds to six pounds a time. Larger still are Britain's car ferry links with the continent, running from Dover. The biggest take 190 cars across in one and a half hours. But one day, hovercraft ferries, which are already creeping onto the drawing board, may make the journey quicker with more cars. And so to the air ferry, the fastest method of transplanting the motorist and his car furthest away from it all. Having booked several months in advance, you drive to Southend, Lyd or Bournemouth according to where you want to go. Onto the ramp goes your medium-sized car, up and into the plane's nose. You can be off to the Channel Islands, France, Switzerland or Holland. At this moment, you, your partner and your car are 50 minutes away from La Touquet, a trip that will cost you altogether about £25 return. You are also 75 minutes away from Rotterdam for roughly double that cost and two hours, 35 minutes from Geneva at double the cost again. Britain pioneered air ferry services in 1948 when planes carried two cars a trip from Lim. Last year, 137,000 cars were ferried out of this country and back by 25 planes. Within 10 years, car ferries will be running, it's expected, as far as North Africa. To the passengers, it's just another air trip. But to the motorist, his car has wings. Here, he is virtually driving from London to Switzerland in a morning, knowing he will arrive fresh and relaxed, with all the motorways of Europe opening before him. 